Okay, I don't think this is a difficult problem, but I, I do want to start talking about using technology, which is something that Wells did not have access to. Um, I, I think if he were um, alive today, you know, certainly being transported 120 years later, uh, he would have been amazed by what, what's available to people. However, I want to claim something about software. Software, although you may think it's magic, it's largely based on a community of people who understand the underlying features of what we're doing. All right, so I, I think the coders of Sage or any other application that you're using out there um, <coughs> are well-versed in mathematics. And many of them are volunteering their time uh, to make great software, all right? Now, I'm going to use a software product that was developed a long time ago. It is called Grapher. Uh, it, was a gr it was a standalone application for, I believe, the Macintosh computer, and Apple bought it. And then they included it with their operating system. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just graph it out. And what I'm going to graph out is that polynomial, which is x to the fourth, <coughs> plus 2x cubed, minus 5x squared, minus 10x, minus 3. All right, I get a picture over there. Now, granted, <coughs> I'm not really appreciating every feature of it, I'm going to do a little zoom out. And that thing really goes deep, doesn't it? And then I'm going to zoom into a, a region that I'm kind of interested in. I'm going to say something like this over here. <coughs> I have a good impression of the picture over here. It, it certainly, I knew it was a fourth degree polynomial. I knew the general shape of it. But now I can further appreciate the roots of it. You know, certainly the root is over here somewhere a root over here somewhere, a root over here, a root over here. I could also say, you know, there's a, um, a local minimum here, a local maximum, and this here is a local minimum, and it's also a global minimum. What I'm going to do is we use the software, and again, we're just talking through it. I'll go back to my blue area in a moment. I'm going to use the software to um, define the uh, point of intersection. All right, so let me just... Uh, Give me a second right over here. Let's see. Find root, right? And I can make a guess at it. So the root I want to guess at is like 2 point something. So I'll say the root near 2. Ah, let's give it a more precise number, 2.3. <coughs> what does it tell me? Well, they're telling me it's 2.3028. That's approximate to four places of accuracy. Notice they put a crosshair on it. They tell me the y value is minus 6 point, well, e to the minus 6 means 10 to the minus 6. Very close to 0, but not exactly. All right, let's do the other one. Let's do the other one. It looks about, I'm going to say about minus 0.3. And again, Wells would have thought of this as almost like witchcraft. What's the number? It's actually minus 0 0.382. That's the three places of accuracy. You notice the y coordinate over here, very close to 0. Let's do the next one. And that's going to be, I'm going to say about minus 1.3. Um, it's actually minus 1.3028 to that level of accuracy. Notice the crosshair again. And notice the y value, very close to 0, by the way. What's the other one? I'm going to say around minus 2.5. And what is it really? It's minus 2.6181 to that level of accuracy. Again, the y coordinate. Uh, essentially zero. It's very close to zero. Is it exact? No. All right, let me go back to the blue area. What I would do for this problem is I don't think I'd use uh, Sturm's theorem. And that's something that may be due to my own ignorance, but I think it's very difficult. So I, I kind of you, you, like use the, I may use the Descartes rule of signs. I may use intermediate value theorem. I know it's a fourth degree polynomial. I know the general shape of it. I might do integers. Mm -hmm. But remember, if I'm using integers, I might miss a root. It does happen. And just to go back over that, for example, this one over here, I was using integers, I would miss a root in this one over here because at minus 1, it's positive. At minus 2, it's positive. I would, I, I would not have seen that. I just wouldn't have seen it just using integers. <coughs> so again, I go through that. Again, using integers is right, rather thuggish, but you get an idea. By using integers, you get an idea about the sign of it, when it's above, when it's below. 
intermediate value theorem when it's crossing the uh, x-axis for the roots, all right? Most of the graphs that I produce in the text, though, have been done using uh, Grapher. I think Grapher is a great application. It's one that's in your tool chest if you're running the OS X system. If not, though, there's other applications out there. For example, I, I think on Windows, uh, I'm not that familiar with the operating system, but I'm sure there's tons of uh, software for that as well, where if you're using Linux, um, BSD, whatever you're using, there's going to be software for graphing, right? It's really that important. Thank you for paying attention, though.